Now, there are people all over the world, uh, mainly uh, in academia and in development assistance and, uh, operations uh, in different countries, who are big enthusiasts of uh, UBI. I think that it'll have many salutary properties. Um, if people in the United States uh, were using their free time to do volunteering or community gardening or, I don't know, learn Mandarin or uh, brush up on their Schopenhauer, uh, maybe there'd be an argument for how uh, paying people to have more free time would be a social good. But remember, we just talked about what the men without work were doing all day long is degrading. It's degrading to them. It's demoralizing to them. Would we really want to use taxpayer resources to buy more of that? Yeah, understood. Um, another quote from your recent uh, book, Men Without Work, which I really, really jumped out at me, uh, was uh, this. The growing incapacity of grown men to function as breadwinners cannot help but undermine the American family. It casts those who nature designed to be strong into the role of dependence on their wives or their girlfriends, on their aging parents, or on government welfare. Among those who should be most capable of shouldering the burdens of civic responsibilities, it encourages instead sloth, idleness, and vices perhaps even more insidious. Uh, and you go on to say that... Uh, it's uh, submersive to the American tradition of self-reliance, to the national ethos, arguably even of our civilization. To, to what extent, Nicholas, do you think that uh, this crisis in employment is also feeding a crisis in what might be called modern masculinity? I, I run into young men who will openly say, I just don't know what is expected of me as a young man anymore. I'm confused as to who I should be and how I should behave. Well, um, John, I, again, I don't know how things are in Australia, but if you talk to young men in the United States, not just young women as well, but young men, let's stick, stick with them. Um, I don't think there's ever been a time in the United States when guys have been af as afraid as they are now. They're afraid of uh, starting families. They're afraid of... Uh, their own economic future. They're afraid of having children. They're afraid of making commitments. They're afraid of failing. Uh, and uh, you know, part of what we part of what we see, I think, with this crisis of work in uh, the United States, is that they're also afraid of daring to maybe fail, of you know making the commitment, uh, you know making the effort to get out and get into the game. I mean, part of what has happened here, in the U.S. at least, and I don't know how that is in other countries, is that we have seen the death of the summer job in my lifetime. Uh, when I was a kid, Summer jobs were a thing for boys and girls alike, for teens. And when you were 15, 16, 17 years old, you know, you'd earn some money, you'd have some uh, some change in your pocket, you had a little bit more independence from your parents, maybe it would help with school or with getting ready for college. Um, but it was it was empowering in all sorts of ways, including like learning about the battlefield of the you know the workaday world. Uh, nowadays in the United States, only a tiny fraction of teens uh, ever have summer jobs. They if they're well to do. They go into enrichment programs, or you know, on the other side, they go into remedial summer programs. And the net effect of this is that most young men in the United States don't have their first collision with paid work until they're well into their twenties. It's an extended period of adolescence, uh, kind of a Peter Pan sort of existence for too many of our young men, and. No wonder, uh, no wonder, in a way, uh, that uh, this thing that you've never had any contact with in your life, this uh, employment uh, thing, uh, may seem so imposing and scary if uh, if you haven't done it as a as a kid. 